Out of all of the shoes that I own, none have been worn more than this pair of Birkenstock Bostons. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you everything that I've learned about wearing Birks over the last 12 months. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Drew Wood Adu, it's nice to meet you. Let's talk Birkenstock Bostons. The biggest con that I have about the Birkenstock Boston actually has nothing to do with the Boston in and of itself, but rather has to do with the initial down payment that you have to make in order to acquire these clogs. I know for a lot of people, they just can't justify spending $140 to $150 on a pair of shoes like this, and as a result, end up going with dupes. Don't get it twisted though, I actually really struggled to find real cons when it came to the Birkenstock Boston when I initially wrote out this review. I went back and forth with even including cost as a major factor for a con, because for me, the pros mightily outweigh the cons for this shoe. The next major con that can be really annoying depending on the version of Birkenstock Bostons that you have is usability. Now these are the oiled leather variant of the Birkenstock Boston and the nice thing about the oiled leather version is that they actually stay up, the upper stays in place even when your foot is not situated inside of them. Meaning that you can really easily slip your foot in and out of the shoe whenever you feel like you want to take them off or put them on. If you're looking to buy the suede version, here's your warning. The major con about the suede version of Birkenstock Bostons is that they're actually relatively difficult to slip your foot into to get going as soon as possible or as quickly as possible with the shoe on. It might be a small detail, but this small detail changes your experience dramatically. I've had other versions of Birkenstocks and I landed on the oiled leather version because it is so easy to use and easy to put on. I highly recommend if you're looking for a pair of Birkenstock Bostons, take a look at the oiled oil leather variant or other variants that maintain their structure without having to have your foot inside of them so you can just slip on and go. The next con that I have for the Birkenstock Boston is how the shoes have held up structurally in high stress areas. The heel on the cork of the right shoe has become really malleable and soft and has deteriorated much quicker than some of the other components of the clog. All in all hasn't really affected the wearability or the use of the shoe but it's definitely something that I've taken note of. Other significant signs of wear include the outsole and specific parts of the upper. But overall, I would say that my Bostons have held up very, very nicely over the last 12 months, especially for how much I actually wear them. For context, I wear my Bostons literally every single day. I wear them at home making videos or working on the computer. I wear them when I need to go to the grocery store or to the post office. I've worn them in rain, sunshine, snow, hail, any condition that you can conceive of, I've worn these Birkenstock Bostons in. And in my estimation over the last 12 months, these have held up incredibly nicely. They look really beautiful still and the patining or like the kind of aging of this shoe has not disappointed me at all. With that being said, I think this is the perfect time to talk about pros because in my opinion, there are a lot of them. The biggest pro about the Birkenstock Boston has to be the comfort. Man, oh man. It takes a little bit of time for the cork to mold to your feet, but when they do, the term walking on clouds takes on a whole new meaning. Some people don't like the way Birkenstock Bostons feel when they first slip their foot into them. It takes, I would say, about three to four wears to get used to the cork and get used to the way that the shoe feels from an insole standpoint. But for me, even those initial wears were so pleasantly nice that from then on out, I literally couldn't take these shoes off and I haven't for the last 12 months, literally. And this may be TMI, but where else are you supposed to give too much information than on YouTube? The level of comfort for the Birkenstock Boston goes beyond the physical sensation for me. When I step into my Birks now, it's almost as though I'm stepping into one of the most reliable fashion products in my life. I wear these literally in every single video that I film because I feel grounded and I just feel comfortable when I wear them. And my feet, my footwear are never in the video. So you guys only see me from the waist up which means that when I wear my Birks, when I'm filming videos or when I'm working, it truly means that it's for me. Another massive pro when it comes to the oil leather variant of the Birkenstock Boston is how durable the upper is. Most people will tell you, you don't wanna wear the suede variant of Birks in the rain because it'll ruin the texture and the overall look of the Birkenstock Boston. In fact, I've seen some pictures of Birkenstock Bostons after 
being in the rain, the suede variant, and it looks kind of like gross and muggy. These exact Birkenstocks that I have with me, the oil leather variant, have been in torrential downpour rain, and you probably would never guess. The way that the leather on this patinas and kind of builds character over time is in a such in such a way that it doesn't necessarily show like disgusting sorts of wear over a prolonged use. From an overall durability standpoint, I am really pleased with the oiled leather variant of my Birkenstock Bostons. The final pro that I want to highlight as it pertains to the Birkenstock Boston is the overall aesthetics of the clog. In my opinion, I think that the Birkenstock Boston is synonymous with what we think about when we think about a mainstream or popular clog. I don't think any other product that is a clog supersedes or beats the aesthetics of the Birkenstock Boston. Unless, I mean, some people really love Crocs, but even then, I think that the Birkenstock Boston is the best looking clog on the market. With the oiled leather variant, at least, you get comfort, you get looks, you get stylistic appeal, you get versatility. And for me at least, I've gotten over a year's worth of longevity with them as well. It's tough to say whether or not Boston's will stay relevant stylistically, but for where we are in fashion, I think that the Birkenstock Boston is moving more and more into this echelon of kind of like classic or, or staple item within a wardrobe. I know some of you may be surprised by me saying that as I've talked about Birkenstocks in the past and said that the trend is dying, but there's a difference between items of clothing that are trendy for a moment and die off in the sense that they'll never come back and items that are kind of these staples that fluctuate in trend and popularity that go up and go down. And I think the Birkenstock Boston is putting itself in position to be one of those more like timelessly trendy items that fluctuates up and down in popularity. We'll see though just my opinion. Overall, over the last 12 months or so, I would say that the Birkenstock Boston has been an awesome experience, has been an awesome addition to my wardrobe, and one of the products that I use, like I said, every single day, and I hope that the longevity of this product continues to impress me for the next 12 months. Let's get a word in for today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you interested in making your very own website for a brand or creative project? Squarespace offers a comprehensive amount of features to make the website that you've always dreamed of. If you want to sell your products direct to consumer or if you just want to display your body of work, Squarespace makes it easy to do that and more. Currently, I'm using my Squarespace website as a hub for all of my content and all of my social media platforms. And if you need a design to help nudge you into creating your first website, this is your sign. Visit squarespace.com slash Drew Joyner for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I wanted to add a small section to this video about sizing and buying tips. First, when it comes to sizing, I would go true to size. Whatever your foot measures, I would get the exact same measurement in terms of sizing for your pair of Birkenstock Bostons. I have a pretty narrow foot and I decided to go with the regular wide fit for the Boston and I've had no problems whatsoever. Unless you have tiny, like really tiny, really narrow feet, then I would go with the other sizing convention for the Birkenstock Boston, which is the medium narrow convention. And I'm curious, if you're someone who's bought the medium narrow size for the Boston, let people know down in the comments what your experience has been because from what I understand and from what I know, most people go with the regular wide. So I'd be curious to know what the other experience is with a more narrow footed Birkenstock Boston. When it comes to buying Birkenstocks, you can obviously buy them on the Birkenstock website, but I think that there are a ton of really cool multi-brand retailers that carry unique Birkenstock Bostons that you just wouldn't get on the regular Birkenstock website. I actually bought these off of Essence on sale, and that's another reason why you should look at other websites. I even think that you can buy Birks on Amazon, not the dupes, but the actual Birkenstocks, you can buy them on Amazon. And if you can find them for a good deal somewhere else, I think your pocketbook, your, your money, your bank account will thank you. Here are some of the retailers that I love that I've seen Birkenstocks on that I would buy if um, I was looking to buy my first pair. So like I said, we have Essence, Canoe Club, Lost and Found, Todd Snyder, My Teresa, and Mr. Porter, just to name a few. To reward those who stay to the end of the video, I have one final bonus tip for all the loyal watchers and listeners of this video. That bonus pro is you can wear your Birkenstocks without socks on, okay? It's going to be okay. You are allowed to take your socks off and slip your toes into your Birkenstock Bostons.
The term raw dogging your Burks identifies those who aren't afraid to live life on the edge when it comes to how they style and wear their Birkenstocks. I'm one of those people. In fact, to bring it back on a serious note, I wear my Burks a lot without socks on. And the amazing thing about that is that they actually end up not smelling that bad. And I don't know if it has to do with my hygiene or if it just has to do with the cork or whatever it may be. I would say it has to do with the cork and the way Birkenstocks are because there are some shoes that you wear, no matter if, no matter how clean your feet are, over prolonged periods of time, once you're sweating, if you're wearing them in the sun, uh, they're going to start smelling a little bit. So I don't know what it is about the Burks. Maybe there's some kind of special sauce about that in terms of them not smelling bad. But I've never had an issue with people saying, bro, your feet stink. And I'm raw dogging the Burks literally every other day. This, I would say, is an awesome pro if you are brave enough to put your bare toes in your Birkenstocks. What did I miss about the Birkenstock Boston? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity. Oh, I forgot my outro. As always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity. In and as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2023. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you from me. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. Abianto. Peace. Yo, what is good, post vid vid? Here are two fist bumps. Bop! Bop! Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. Comment hashtag PVV down in the comments. Let's get to the next video.